Hello and welcome. With the release of the RS3 closed beta, since all that is available so far is the graphical portion, I figured I would run all around Gilinar and record how each area looked with increased render distance. I'll have the listing including timestamps of each location in the description if you just want to skip around, and if I missed a location feel free to comment below on where you would like to see next. Also there's a few other notes here and there, but it's there if you want to read it. So. Most of the difference that I could just say straight off is how far away you could see with the render distance, the shadows changing depending on which area you are, where certain areas are brighter and certain areas are darker. And when you cross these areas, the shadows will change accordingly to simulate the passing of the day or just changing the mood of the area. Then there's also the difference in the water. There's the water detail where you can see your reflection, you can see the reflection of buildings, and there's a really good shot of the water reflection of the wizard tower from the Mudskipper Point, which I'll show later on. So throughout this video, I'll be commentating about the area. It's really just filler so that it's not just a video recording of RS3. Feel free to mute the video if you want, if you just want to look around. But one thing I found cool was you could see all the way to the Chaos Prayer Altar in the wilderness, all the way from Verak. So this is what lava looks like. It doesn't seem too different from the live game, but looking around you do see how everywhere around you is pretty much a burnt wasteland, with which which is kind of like the result of what happened during the God Wars, where the God Wars were... It was fought all over the place, but this area was affected the most, and it became what is now today the wilderness. So for those... Now, this is a bit of a spoiler of some RuneScape lore, but the sword in the middle in the wilderness crater... Now, it is a warning. Uh, there, this is a spoiler, but if you've been playing Aris since Bounty Hunter Critters, you'll know that this sword was not always here. It was added at some point after to build on top of existing lore surrounding the God Wars, where this sword belongs to the god Guthix, who used the sword in some ambiguous way, but eventually banished all the gods with the Edicts of Guthix from Gilinar. And this was kind of shown in the RuneScape World Awakes trailer. It's a really nice trailer. I'll link it in the description if you want to check it out. So the sword in the middle is an artifact dating all the way back to the God Wars. And what the God Wars was, was basically there are several factions for the different gods. And they waged war over dominance in Gilinar. And all the fighting from the God Wars woke Guthix up. Upon awaking, Guthix banished all the other gods with the edicts of Guthix because he's just that powerful apparently. And somehow his sword is just impaled in the ground from the God Wars. Also a cool little fact is that the wilderness area used to be a kingdom or a large city called Foreign 3, which, you know, like the Foreign 3 dungeon, Foreign 3 bracelet, Foreign 3. Now this is just a really, really old name for it, but during the God Wars, a lot of the fighting occurred in this area within the Foreign 3 kingdom, which resulted in it becoming this black, desolate area and what we know today as the wilderness, which is just a cool little RuneScape lore. So oddly I was getting really good FPS and well I didn't have max settings on, only a few were toggled on because at the moment when this was recorded, if you entered the game in certain settings, it would just crash the game. It would be unable to load. So since I had decent FPS, I decided to run around and see how far I could get before it starts to lag. So I do this several times in several different areas in this video just to see how far I can go and usually I go pretty far. So this render settings lets you see the background much, much further away. But the render settings for characters and other NPCs, such as players and just, you know, like general store owners, they're still restricted to the normal 11 or 12 square away render distance. Although this is only because they only have this right now so that RS3 beta players don't have an advantage over RS2 players who are still using the Java client. So that it's still fair if like you're in the wilderness but when they release rs3 i'm not sure if increasing character render distance in the wilderness is going to be a good idea because if it's done you can see clans way far away you will be able to decide if you want to fight or not before they're even remotely close to you and for multi peaking that's going to be a bit more difficult unless it's like a scheduled war between two clans or multiple clans in other areas outside of PvP, sure, this is fine. Like in Grand Exchange or something, that would be 
okay. But if they do increase render distance of characters on RS3 release, they should probably just leave it out of the wilderness or any PvP areas so that it's fair to both Java and HTML5 users. So you can see all the way around, you can see the Obelisk F44 Wilderness, you can see, I don't know, it's called Ice, I can't remember what it was called, but like the ice area where it leaks into what is the ice area of RuneScape. Then going forward, you can see the lava maze. I guess like seeing an overview of it mix is easier to navigate, but before it's like you had such a narrow view of everything inside of it. Then there's like the green dragons at around this should be... No, this isn't 35 Wilderness, or... I don't know, I think they increased the level of Wilderness quite a while ago because of how they changed the combat system with how level was calculated, but then right there was the Wilderness War events, which I'm actually surprised that it actually got... Like, if you've been to the Wilderness War events, there is a lot of people there. Now, between the hour, like, it's eight hours apart, or it was on release, where each Wilderness War events only show up, it's like, it doesn't come up that often. But in the time when it does come up, there is a lot of people there. There are, well, I think there are French chats for it now, but then, if you've ever been in a French chat with two chats that do exactly the same thing but then somebody causes trouble on one side then for the next three weeks or so you just get bitter squabbles going back and forth between the two chats it just gets annoying to see if you've ever been between any of these two fights it's just bitter ignorance on both sides which just leads to hateful attacks towards the other side which i've seen start with spamming in the other friend's chat to direct attacks at the accounts of people ranked in the other friends chat and if you ever join either chat being caught in the middle of all of this even if you don't care about what's going on when all you want it is maybe just some loot or xp then leave it just seems like somehow you, you chose a side even though you really just don't care and silly things like this is just sometimes hilarious to see how bitter some people can get I don't recall when they changed the volcano around, but I remember having, like this was back when I did PvP a lot, I had a 10v10 fight on this, well the bridge isn't here anymore, but there was a bridge going across the volcano, and it was like a 10v10 rage fight, and it was like one of the most fun I had in a very long time. I don't think I remember I was able to loot all this stuff, now it, it kinda sucks that the items only show up for like 120 seconds, which is 2 minutes, and the fight lasted longer, so all the loot from the other side, nobody was able to loot any if at all. The Chaos Elemental doesn't seem too scary right now, when it doesn't look as big as it did before compared to the terrain. Back when there was only fixed screen, it seemed pretty big because you had such a small screen to see it in. It covered like a quarter of the screen, but now it seems quite small. From the exit, you can see all the way from the Mage Arena, all the way down to the Red Dragon Isle, and all the way to Rogue's Castle, which is, I guess, pretty far, but then it's like the area between is just empty, although it is supposed to be a desolate wasteland due to what happened during the God Wars. This area is inside the Mage Bank past the pool where you get your god capes. And if you didn't know that RuneScape, there is the ground level of RuneScape where you see the world map of every city and where they are respect to each other. Then there are dungeons, second floor houses, third floor, fourth floor, so on, so on, so on. And these areas are mapped in different locations. Some of them are usually adjacent to others, like this one where you can see out there are something beyond there. But they look really familiar, but I can't figure out where these ones are from. Heading outside, you can see my shadow right there, up to the top of Major in it, and you can see pretty far out. Although, I don't think the shot is really that good. It's just that you can see really, really far, and I thought, okay, why not? Although, there used to be a giant wall around Major in it, now it's just a thin fence, and it's a little elevated, that's about it. Then west of the major unit is this crashed pirate ship. I thought this looked pretty decent, but then it's like the bloom settings might just be making it look good, when without it, it might just look okay. Then heading over to the frozen wasteland, I think I got towards the end of this clip, there's a really good shot of how it looks when you're transitioning between areas with different shadow effects, where you'll see the shadows move. And oddly, I was surprised I got a decent I think it was around 15 FPS, and that, that might not seem good, but compared to certain other areas, it's pretty good. 
and heading up the hill up to where the steel and iron dragons are from the ROTM quest, you can see the shadows are gonna start moving and yeah. It looks pretty good. Although shadows do lag quite a bit, so I'm surprised that it still hit like 15 or so FPS. And well, I haven't done the quest, so I can't enter this area yet. Sadly, my other account that did do this quest didn't get into the beta either, but I don't think there's much beyond the, the walls, except maybe a view from the castle. Looking to the north, you can see the obelisk that was around level 35 wilderness. To the east is the one around 13 wilderness. And it's kind of cool that you could see from obelisk to obelisk. Although before it used to be that they were so far away that you were map views away. But now it seems a bit smaller. You could see the outlines of Edgeville as well as the Black Knight Castle just west of Edgeville. So I thought I would head into God Wars and see how it would load. Initially, I thought that if I went in, it would just be like a lag fest over and over. It is in certain areas, mostly around the boss area where it takes a little longer to load than usual. But I got a decent area just like, um, I may have to come back to record the bosses because, although it's not too big of a difference because mostly they don't look too different from how they look now. So I don't think I missed out on much, but I will get a shot of the four God Wars General, including Nex. So if you look at this pirate thing right next to me, like just Northwest, it looks, I, I didn't even know that they updated how the pirate fiends look. I think it's a pirate fiend. It's on fire, so it has to be. So looking around, you can see that, well, the areas are walled off, so you can't really get a feel. So I'm just gonna head over to the Ceredoman area. And like I said earlier, the water effects are what I like. It looks pretty good for Ceredoman's encampment. So heading down, um, I do drop like down to like 10 FPS, but I guess that's okay seeing as usually it's like maybe 30ish. And for a beta this early, it's I guess it's okay. And you can see the water effects and there's that little waterfall going into the crack of the ice and you can see the ripples. Then heading downstream, you can head over to the boss area. Now this is where it gets laggy because like I said earlier, the boss areas are a bit more laggy when I'm looking at them because I guess like I haven't actually loaded all the combat portion of our street yet. So when they're doing their auto attacks and when people are doing their abilities, it, it tends to start to lag. So yeah, that's pretty much this area. I think out of the other four God Wars, I like this area the most because of the water effects. Whereas the others are, well, I'm heading to Zamrak, which is, aside from what you see here, there isn't really much to it. Like, um, okay, there's jumping across here and you'll see that it's at a weird angle from how it shows me jumping across. Now there are these bugs all over the place. It's, it's nothing too major, but Zamrak area, there, really isn't much to look at. It's just runes, there's nothing too special as there isn't the darkening feel as the closer you get. So there isn't really much to do in that area. So heading back out, mm, not too much change. I, I do like the water falling in and then the ripple effects in the holes. There's a few of that around, but then that's not in the Zamrak area. Heading over to the Avanci area, when you go over just the tip of it, of that bridge thing that you do to get across, you get a sky view of the Avanci area. This is, uh, sure it's a bug, but I mean, you get, a, you get to see a cool overview. I guess that's pretty good, but aside from that little bug and the entrance here, there really is nothing too unique about this area except for flying creatures, that's about it. And it's pretty much the same for the Bandos area as well because I think only Serdomen Encampment actually has something different where it has water, whereas all the other three areas, not including next, has just ruins, and the rest just have the same type of look to it. That's enough of God Wars for now. I'll come back when the generals are easier to load. I'll make a follow-up video and link it in the description. But going to al just east of it, to the Sithery Bell Tower? You know, that thing from the One Piercing No Quest, it looks really nice from up here. You can see the Haunted Mine, Berg Dorat, and the docks for Berg Dorat, I don't think it loaded properly, but I guess it's just too far away. There's also some shadow issues here, I guess, with like some weird circles. But you can also see that place north of Narda, the ruins of Uzir or something. Well, like north of that. 
And oddly, I thought the Dominion Tower was this really tall tower, but this, apparently the Pell Tower here, is taller than that. I, I guess they only designed like two levels to, well, three levels. There's the base floor, then there's the actual floor that you fight on, then there's the top of the tower, which... When I got up there, initially I was disappointed because nothing was up there. But okay, so there's Dual Arena that got reworked and just Alcarid way... It's kind of odd that you can't see Alcarid from here, even though it's really not that far away. Going outside the Abbey, you can see... You can see Dual Arena, then you can see Alcarid, but looking at Alcarid gets quite laggy at these settings. And this is actually, like, I think around Lumbridge and Alcarid and some of the Lumbridge Swamp, it gets really, really laggy. Although it looks nice, but it's like unplayable at the moment. Heading back up to the Bell Tower, I thought I would get the shot from the west side, this time showing the clock down in the middle and the statue to the east. Although there's that weird, I can't tell what that is in the background, like way in the back in like the foggy area past the waters. Next on my list was Mage Training Area. Now it took like two whole minutes at one fps to do a whole 360 to record it all but the magic trees just look too nice to pass up then heading to runespan now if you've been to runespan before you know it's supposed to be like three layers on top of each other but from how they're designed in the game apparently it's just you can see from one side to the other so i guess they're on the same plane so when they do increase the render distance for NPCs, inanimate objects, non-player characters, I think Runespan would be one that would benefit from it so that you can see which node you want to go for before, without having to get within map view to be able to see it. So here's Draenor, nothing too special. You could see the adjacent towns, you could see Draenor to the south, it's, it's a small city, and it's not really much to it. You can even see Falador to the west, including the adjacent areas. So, Mudskipper Point, I think this is one of my favorite spots. As you can see the reflection in the water, you can see the entire wizard tower and just how tall it is. And panning the camera, you could see the shipyard in southern Karamja, as well as the Karamja docks. Then heading north to Portstrom into the Grotworm Lair, I figure I would check out the Hubity Lair as well as the Grotworm Lair while I'm here. So, surprisingly, I thought like past to the north there would be that other side like the first floor because originally I thought like so you had the first layer, the first level when you enter the Grotworm Lair, and based on how the dungeon kept on going and kind of like a C formation, I thought that. It's like the first floor was on the opposite end of the third floor, where in between there's an abyss, but I guess maybe that's true, or maybe it just isn't. No, it's probably not true, or else they would put it in the same one, I guess. But I was surprised that this actually worked, because in the previous beta, when I was logging the QBD for... I, I did a 1001 QBD log in the previous beta, and each time I logged in, if I got attacked by a Grot Worm, it would just instantly crash the game no matter what. Although, if I didn't get attacked, it would load properly, and I thought I would have the same problem here, but they're unaggressive, so good thing it works. So, with the Grot Worm layer, I guess there isn't really much to it since you can't see across the abyss. It would have been cool, but... Since you can't, there isn't really anything special here. After checking out the Grot Worm Lair, I decided to stop by the QBD. So at the QBD, there's a few things missing. Um, it didn't load completely. There's only like the walkway you could kind of see through certain parts. But besides that, you can see the background is just all black. And that goes back to how everything before RS3 was designed around what was available in RS2. Where, okay, players could only see a certain amount. So there's no point to design anything further than what people or players are able to see. As that's just wasted development time. That's why we don't see anything past there. And what we used to see is like the pillars uh, that you see along the sides is just beyond that, just like right after the pillars, you would just see fog. And that's how it is in the live game. Just to be like, oh, we can't see that far out. Maybe there's more out there. But, uh, oh well. 
Um, I wasn't really expecting to see anything new since it's just logical that they wouldn't develop anything further than that. So earlier I was just seeing if I would be able to load the QBD and I was so I came back with three items. Uh, well three items because in case I die which does happen a few times but I think like this fire right here is like if you have it zoomed down so that you're viewing from the floor the QBD looks like a really well done boss and if you view it from the top like a sky view of the fight it just makes it look like you're playing from a third person point of view rather well this is still third person but having it closer to the ground you kind of feel the attacks not just try to evade it and oh if you haven't noticed this is kind of a bit more zoomed in than it usually is usually it's a bit more zoomed out so that you could see the other two corners pretty easy for the souls on the fourth phase so that's just something you have to fix then there's also the tortured souls that pop up they look pretty bright with bloom on and that's about it I didn't actually get any further footage because um, when I came to try it again, it just, I got really bad frame rates. Now that we're out of the QBD, at top of Fallado Castle, you can see pretty far, you can see Draenor Manor. You can even see the area around the Cabbage Patch and including the clan camp with the access to the Citadel. Even Mesler, Mesler's Maze and the Dark Wizard Tower and including the southern part of Taverly. It's pretty nice view. You can even see the tavern in Felidor. At Dark Wizard Tower, you can see the witch's house that got moved south of Taverly, as well as the willows by the waterside. And Entrana off with... I always forget that Entrana is right there, right next to Crandor. Although, well, since we never really had to run the resistance, you couldn't really see... I mean, you could see like the tip, but you couldn't see like the entire island before. And that's this wasn't too far from the previous spot on top of the Falador Castle. At the Castle Camulot, you could see the borders of the Trollheim area. Then, actually, I was on Ice Wolf Mountain uh, that's right near here. And at the top, it doesn't feel like a mountain. It seemed like they made the area more flat than it was before they changed it. But it's easier to see across now. So this area doesn't really have much to look at. Uh, if you look south, you can see kind of far, you can see the Sorcerer's Tower, but that's... There isn't really a good view here. It's just like, you can see far away. That's about it. For those who have done the Merlin's Crystal Quest, you will remember the box that you had to get in that was by the candle shop. And yeah, with the render distance at max, you can see like, I can't figure out what these areas off to the side are. But if you turn around, you can see the other box that you used to get back. At the moment, I'm using the box to get to... I can't remember what it was, but it was like something Le Fay. And when you get off there, you get a really nice view of the docks. As, well, I don't know. Personally, I just like the watercolors and the reflection. It's a nice upgrade from what we had before. Although, at the moment, the water, I mean, it's like... It's not animated, it's like still and well the reflection changes as you move but the water itself doesn't move and sometimes it does look like gel, that's my only problem with the water right now. At the highest point of Sears you can see Sinclair Mansion but what is cool about this is you can see the fire that's on the ground level as well as the ashes which means you, there's a few things you can see on all levels. You could see objects, apparently fire, I'm not sure what that's classed with but then you could also see like spell effects like soul split, ice barrage, as well as a few others that yeah I'm sure there's a few others that I'm missing. At Trollheim you can see all the way to the entrance of God Wars. RuneScape being a massive game there are many things to do. Often people are not aware of every little thing in the game. I'm not saying that God Wars is little but using it as an example of what can spark an interest in a certain area. Hopefully new areas in the future are developed with RuneScape 3 in mind where it sparks people interest as they explore around rather than having people look up on uh, what it is when they need it. So since I was at Trollheim, I thought why not just go on the icy path and see how it looks. So it doesn't look that different. You can see pretty far, sure. You get a feel that it's all icy all around, but nothing too spectacular here. 
Now, I do have Infinite Run on, which I got from the Ooglock pool, which lets me keep on running because every like couple of seconds, it's supposed to sap my energy down to zero or no, it's, that's a different one. It's supposed to drain my energy by a certain amount, but thankfully I have the Infinite Run buff going, so it doesn't take as long to record. So it just loops around in a circle. I guess it's okay. It's an okay area. I've already shown snowy areas like in the wilderness where you have the snowy effect and turning your camera does change where the snow effects are. And that's about it. This area is from the Desert Treasure Quest where you get the Ice Diamond from, where a troll sends you to that circularly path from earlier to get their dads and in return they have the Ice Diamond that you require. So this is, I guess, this area, like when you transition it gets a more blue effect here. And honestly, there's not much to say about this. It was a good, uh, it was a good area though. And all the way out. So I thought like, okay, so I had like pretty good FPS going all the way through because these are pretty old graphics. So I just kept on going through the utter cave and I don't, damn, I don't, I don't remember which quest this area was from, but I know that there's like supposed to be some kind of underground path that brings you to that giant okay i guess i don't know much about or i don't remember everything about runescape but it's like there's this underground path you go through like rocks and then you go up the cellar into that castle which is right there off to the side but looking back you do see the bottom of the circle path and there's that cave entrance i was talking about so in player owned ports, there's only a few lighting issues, nothing too major. Downside of ports though is, again, it's a small instance area, which I kind of don't like them making everything like instance, where it's like when they add new content, they're not adding to the map. It's like they're adding, like if they added God Wars, they added it like up north of Trollheim. If they added the ROTM quest, it was added on top of the frozen wasteland in the wilderness. Whereas here, it's just made in Instance and you get a portal to hear from Port's Rim. But aside from that, I guess like beyond, if you just look at what is it there, it looks pretty good. But it's really not that different as there is nothing to see in the distance. Only difference is the water detail and the shadow. And at Clam Wars, I'm not sure exactly why my camera is so low to the ground. And actually, when I recorded this, I couldn't actually move it. But I mean, this looks kind of cool. You can actually see the sky, which makes the area seem quite vast. Although this could just be like anywhere on the map. Like there are many areas like this. I don't know why they don't let us see the sky. I know before the reason was because there is no sky. There's nothing up there. And it could be like if you see the ground right now, like the bottom part of the screen later, you'll just see like right here. There's a lot of clipping issues. I think that's going to be something that they're not going to go for because of the whole clipping issue. But aside from that, I guess this is how Clam Wars look like. Nothing too significant, but you can just see pretty far. In the Elven City, Perfidus, the one way to the north, the big crystal wall around it. And well, this is a spoiler for those who have not done Morning and Part 3. But there is a reason that this walled off area is mostly just empty. The only noticeable landmarks aside from the lamps and wildlife there are these structures. Two of these are seen at each of the corners. Well if you look at the entire border as like a square. There's two of these towers at each side. And that's all there is to see here because well again this is a spoiler but the city has for the most part reverted back to its crystal form. This being an elven city being built by crystals through crystal singing, this explains why there isn't anything here. This fact is revealed in the Morning Ends Part 3 quest and yeah, well it would have been really cool to have seen a crystal city completely built by crystal but I guess not. Hopefully that's gonna be what is the upcoming quest that I don't know when they're gonna do the quest to follow the Elven series but it's supposed to be I think 
it's expected to be either this year or the next year. Probably next year, because updates are usually later than expected. And just looking around, well, still kind of looks like a maze, as the trees are pretty tall. At Leitya, or however you pronounce the city, there really isn't... Uh, there's nothing really too fantastic about the city, because most of it you could have already seen with the normal render distance. Sure, you could see Castle Wars, sure, you could see some of the swampy area, but there isn't really much to it. You, It's not that great. Although, magic trees, sure. I don't know, I, I, these magic trees I seem to like better than the previous ones. And yeah, nothing really much to see. Although, you could see all the way up to the Crystal City. At the tires camp, the reflection in the water is so nice. And the horizon doesn't look too bad for being on the edge of the known map. So since I got good FPS, I decided to just keep on running until the FPS dropped to um, something that just wasn't watchable and it went pretty far. The toxic swamp reminds me of when I was doing Regicide or one of the elven quests where you get to call the sulfur to distill it, which took me a million tries to do when I think I was doing it when I was in middle school for the first time, but I kept trying to find where you were able to take the sulfur because there's like a million spots to take the sulfur, but only one of those spots were actually accessible. And yeah, I don't know why I even try to step over the tripwire, it's like so small. And anyway, with the swamp, I mean, from the looks of it, Sure, the area in front has the right feel for swamp, but the area south of it, you can see trees growing wildlife. So I had another good streak of good FPS, so I thought I'd just run for how far I can get before it stops or crashes, and it went on for a very long time. I pretty much went to every spot in Mauritania. So yeah, that's what it looks like on top of the ectophile place. So going downstairs into Port Vasmatis, you can see on the horizon there's a green background for that eerie swampy feel, but then you can also see Dragon Tooth Island way in the distance. So that's the docks, there's a charter boat, and then there's the other boat that brings you to Muscle Harvest, and there's that little boat that brings you to Dragon Tooth Island. So you can see by the rooftops that even though most of it looks the same, it still kind of fits the feeling of Port Fast Mantis. So heading into the Haunted Woods, I guess it looks okay, but there's this funny Reddit post where since you could see really far away in RS3, all the way from the Ecto file place, you could see if your herbs died or not. So you could be disappointed as you teleport in. You don't have to wait to run all the way there to find out. You also get a good view of Canifis as well as from the top of Finkenstrain's castle, which also sees a giant slayer tower to the side. So heading back down, you could see why just how far the swampy area goes? There's also that Chiso statue that's the monthly D&D. Heading through Canifis, nothing too different. The uh, lighting might be a bit different if you have it on. And you could see all the way into the Mauritania swamp area. It's quite far. The next vantage point I wanted to get a view from was from the, the Temple of Sol. And it looks pretty nice. You can see the giant slayer tower and the rest of the swamp. Yeah, that's about it from here. At the entrance of the haunted mine, you can see Morton, you can see Bird the Ra, and then if you pan the camera, you could continue to see the new dual arena that got updated just a couple weeks ago. So heading into Bergdara, I decided to head to the Dark Mirror area and see how it would look. And well, of course, first stopping and I'm not sure if the water looks fine as it is. I'm not sure if it's using the same look as everywhere else or does it look a bit different being in the swamp area. But heading on the boat and heading to the dark mirror area, when I do get off the boat, sometimes the water looks like gel because the water doesn't actually ripple, it just has the illusion of it since it just repeats the same thing over and over on every single tile. And actually that's going to be a weird thing for RuneScape graphics since 
everything is pretty much based around a square. None of the, well, from what I know and from what I see, it doesn't look like, say, like you have two tiles. It doesn't look like each tile is connected with each other. It seems like they're more separate where one tile, like say tile A takes its source from whatever A is and then tile B is sourced with whatever B could be. And they're just given the illusion that they fit together so that it seems like one concrete object. And I guess if you have ever played with Legos, so you have those standard 2x2 two two blocks and then you have the 2x4 blocks. It would be like having a 2x2 two two blocks on top of each other to simulate to simulate a 2x4 two block. It looks like a 2x4 block, but it's really just two separate pieces. That's kind of what I mean by this. I'm actually amazed at how tall this dragon castle is. This is on the bottom, like this is on ground level where everything is placed. Like you can see the swamp area on the mini map. This isn't like a second story and you can just see how tall you are, which just shows how tall this castle is. Really, really big. Oddly, this feels more like a mountain, that more of a mountain than compared to like White Wolf Mountain, which if you've been there, it looks pretty flat right now. Okay, now that we're done with the Mauritania area, off to the Clan Citadel. So, I thought, I can't remember where, but I remember somewhere in the Clan Citadel, if you looked off into what was below you, you could see at the top of the Dominion Tower. Now this was back when the Dominion Tower was supposed to be like this super tall building that it pretty much reached the skies. But as I showed earlier with the Scytherid Bell Tower, that bell tower is taller than the Dominion Tower, and that's because the Dominion Tower really only has three levels to it. It doesn't really go any higher because it doesn't need to go any higher which if they made it actually look higher, that's just... I mean, I guess they could update it, but previously, before the render distance thing, there was really no point to actually making it look taller. So heading up to the highest point in the Clan Citadel, there is the Avatar Habitat. Then there's the other assorted skills, the skilling plots. And they're pretty spread around. This is a tier 6 Citadel, it's not fully upgraded yet. And to upgrade to tier 7, that requires a lot of resources. I think more than we have at the moment. Heading over to some fairy code coordinates. Um, this one's pronounced... I have no idea. It's like K-Keshi? Keshi? But it's the D-I-R then A-K-S. It's used during the ROTM quest and it's where you find how to make Bane ore or what it's used for. I haven't actually done the quest, so I can't go any further than the first island, but you could pretty much see the island from the footage. It's already a pretty small island to start with, so there's not much to it. This one was requested a lot, it was the Enchanted Valley, although this, besides the water, the shadows, pretty much this area is already small by itself. and. Yeah, there's not really much to it. This is where you could still get random events like chopping a tree. Then there's the kissing a frog one. And yeah, it's a really small area. Although I guess the water does look really nice now. So the Polypore dungeon is one of the more well done dungeons as it has three layers to it. There's a top, middle, and bottom floor. And well, actually I think it was three floors. Well, anyway, they're stacked on top of each other, so you could see it all really, really well. And the cool thing is that even from all the way up here, you could see, you could still see if somebody is soul splitting all the way on the bottom floor. So that kind of, I'm not sure if you could see drops though, because even though I was so far up, I didn't see any, but it's worth a shot to test out. So one thing I'm curious about is if they'll ever integrate it so that you could see people on multiple levels. It's not just like drops and stuff, which would be really, I'm not sure if it would work out since all the different floors are not directly connected with each other. They're actually separate areas. So I guess that's something for the future to consider. 
So I decided to check out the mole and I think this would be one of the better areas where it would really help and if you just noticed there the mole did not have its head. But it's like with the increased render distance if they apply it to monsters it would really help to actually find where the mole is without having to have the Falador Elite Shield. So at Xanaris, I think the bloom effect just like makes everything look brighter. Maybe that's just me. But yeah, here's a look around Xanaris. It looks pretty, I guess, but like the walls, the tree walls are already so big that you can't really see that far. And oh look, a cow. Huh. Yeah. So... There's like very few areas where the render distance helped. Shadows don't really change since there's no real difference. And water detail, there's not really any water around here. There's really nothing too different about this area. So I decided to head south to the altar. I can't remember which altar it was. But anyway, in this area, if you look to the north, you can see that instance area of Drainer where you see the wise old man kill some guy and get his blue party in, as well as killing other players. Also, the area along the sides are like to the west is where you get Dar Flower from whatever that place is called, and to the east is the Death Altar. After all that, I decided to check out Lunar Isle. Now, you could see pretty much the entire city anyway, so there's not much to see in the city. So I decided to head out. You could see the boat as well as all the way down to the altar, but heading north, you could see the Livid Farm area. So, there's that. Heading all the way south, I figured I would check out how the altar actually looks like, and here, um, there... I, I guess there's like some issues loading the water sometimes where it just doesn't show up. But the sea water seems to be fine. It just seems to be like other bodies of water where sometimes it might not load and all you see is what's below it. So here's Astral Altar. Looks pretty nice and the whole Stonehenge look to it. And for the final location for part one of Look at Runescape 3 is the Lumbridge Swamp, including the Tormented Demon area. I will do a part 2 for areas I probably missed, but I'll talk about that more towards the end of the video. So I think I actually really like this, the rework they did for the Lumbridge Swamp. It makes it less of a dungeon. You could see further, there's none of these clunky walls just hogging up all the space. And yeah, I pretty much like it here. Without the clunky walls, you can actually see more of the areas. So if you made it this far, huge congrats to you. So what do you think of it so far? Sure, it's a step up, but the, the customizable interfaces is not yet available in the beta. But do you remember that this is a beta? What most people forget is that this is an early access to an early version of the game while it's still developing. So reminder, this is a beta, which is why I'm showing the good side of what is there at the moment so that you'll have an idea of what it'll be like when it's optimized for performance. Certain areas I cannot include yet because of poor frame rate issues, but they'll be fixed eventually. So that's about it. Also, if you want any specific locations, feel free to comment which location below. I'll list the locations that I showed in this video in the description as well as their timestamp. Also including what I have planned for part 2 which I'll link it in the description when it's done. So if you have not done the Wild Gothic Sleeps I'm heading down towards the Torment Demons and actually part 2 will probably include the for sure probably the four God Wars General including Nex. Then there's the Queen Black Dragon, Catfight King, hopefully should be okay, and the other lower tiered bosses. So before RS3, I always noticed that there was always something way off in the distance and well, with the render distance, I finally know what that was. It's these caves that were always off to the side and that's what I saw. So I guess that answers that question. So climbing up the wall to head the Tormented Demons, which well, I can't really say that I'm gonna expect too much because the area around it was pretty... it's not exactly large. 
but it is kind of cool to see like the little effects um, render as you run along. You can see the different pathways for when you have to do the herb lore portion, where you make pretty much one of each potion. And I swear, the three times I've done this quest, I always accidentally used the Mortmire mushroom that was given for free, which resulted in me having to bank several times, three times for one for each account. So here's the tormented demons. So that's it for this 45 minute look into various locations across RuneScape 3, RuneScape 3, which utilizes the HTML5 client. So if you made it this far, I would like to thank you very much for watching and have a nice day. And this is what the layer looks like.